Welcome back everybody, I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be making something that I think is very very cool. It comes as a request from Ketogenic on Discord who wants to know how to make a stealth camouflage uh, material that can be used with any other material that any other sort of object is going to have on it. And I thought that's interesting because it, it, we have to figure out a way to do it without using translucency but also a way to do it you know, at runtime while the, while the, um, while the game is running. So without further ado, let's get started in exactly how to do that. And the first thing we'll need is a uh, material function. So we'll right click in our uh, content browser here, we'll go materials and functions, grab ourselves a material function, materials and textures, I mean, to get a material function. And we'll call this one stuff, uh, if I can spell, holy crap, stuff, can I underscore MF? Then we'll open that up and we can start fleshing this out. And much in the same way that we did in uh, the Panini projection video, we're going to use material attribute nodes and affect uh, the um, the default Unreal Engine mannequin, as seen in the third person camera, a third person character, which I have open here. And just as a note before we go on, if we click on our uh, mesh here or select it in our components list, head on down to the material, hit this little magnifying glass, we will find where that material is. You probably have a mannequin folder. And if you don't have these uh, files, by the way, we can go to add new, then add feature or content pack, and um, just pick from the from the list here. So let's open up this material and just have a quick look at what's going on. And as we see here, it looks a little bit strange to, to a lot of newcomers because there's no uh, material node, although this little node here serves the same process. In fact, if we uh, un untick this uh, line here and then head over here to this checkbox, use material attributes and reset that back to normal, you can see that we have our original um, our original material there. But let's leave that as is. So we'll just check this use material attributes and just hook this up here. The point that I'm trying to make is that this uh, connection here, this object type that's been connected is material attributes. That's the, the input that they're gonna be working with. So let's jump back to our material function here and start fleshing this out. So let's right click and get a make material attributes node. And then out of this, uh, we'll just set an input. So an input to our function, which will be material attributes. And we can check this little box here so we can make that a little bit more discreet. And uh, then we're going to need to come out of here into a get material attributes. Because while we can, um, oh actually, while we're, while we're at that, a set material attributes. So this set material attributes here is going to feed straight into our output so that our output is going to be uh, a material attributes output. But we can also use these nodes here if we uh, start creating, uh, well, hit, hit plus on this little entry here. We can make ourselves sort of a, a list of individual attributes that we can manipulate here inside the material function. So if we wanted to, uh, for example, and incidentally, we'll be doing this a little bit later, grab the normal and add it to a different normal map that we'll be using. We can grab the normal of our material attributes here, perform uh, whatever calculation we want. And then over here in set, we just need to have an entry here for normal, and then we can just set our uh, normal value. I hope uh, this process is making sense to you guys. If there's any confusion, just let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to explain all of these things quite a bit further. For now, uh, let's grab our set material node here. We, the only things that we're going to be manipulating is the opacity mask and the normal. The reason we're using the opacity mask instead of opacity is because if we go back to our mannequin body here and select this material attributes node, here in the material domain, we're working with a surface material that is masked, which uh, is sort of the uh, the sort of workaround that we're aiming for here. Because as as uh, Ketogenic said, it should be able to work with um, any other object, not just translucent objects. So the next step, uh, let's head back to our content browser here. Let's right click, head to materials and textures, and make ourselves a material parameter collection. And this is just a, a collection of scalar values or vector values that we can use in materials and we can affect them from elsewhere in the engine. For example, in other blueprints or um, other actors, other sort of objects that, you know, that use the graph. So let's call this one stealth underscore MPC for material parameter collection. And we'll open this guy up. I'm just gonna tear him off here so it's a bit more, a uh, bit more discreet. And we need to make ourselves three scalar values. And we'll just bring these down. All right, we'll name the first one. Uh, pretty simply opacity. The second one is going to be our uh, UV multiplier. 
because we might want to dial in our normal maps. And the third one is going to be our normal depth, like how much of the normal that we want to be showing through. Because we're going to have a different normal map for, well, for the default object as it exists, and also for the stealth camouflage that we're going to be putting in. Uh, for now, let's set our UV multi to 1, uh, our opacity to 1, so that we're perfectly visible, and we can leave our normal depth at 0. So let's just save that, and we can close it now. We don't need to touch that again. Then head back to our material function, and we can finish building this out. So let's grab a collection uh, parameter here, which, because we had our stealth NPC selected in the console browser, has automatically uh, chosen for us. Otherwise, we can pick it from a drop down here. Um, and we'll get one of each of our values. So opacity, UV multi, and our normal depth. So let's start with, uh, let's start with opacity. To make uh, actual translucently, translucency sorry, happen in a masked material, I'm going to use a very cool little function called dither temporal AA. And we're just going to plug this straight into our opacity mask. Then we can save it. Uh, if we, well, let's just double click our dither temporal AA node. We'll have a little look at what's going on in here. So the, the basic nature is that we're generating some noise and also using a, a, a texture, some high frequency noise there, and making some screen space calculations to apply an alpha value to uh, pixels on a pixel by pixel basis. And in a mask material, that's gonna create either a, a zero or a one. So based on that, we can use this to sort of simulate transparency, even though it won't be perfectly transparent, but it's gonna do its best. Uh, we'll have a bit of a closer look at how that's gonna work uh, shortly. For now, let's just finish making up our, um, our material here. So we'll do our normal map next. So let's uh, hold in T and click. Uh, we need a texture. And if we hold in U and click, we'll get a texture coordinate node. So we'll just grab both of these, make some little room here, hold an M and click for a multiply. And set a multiply like that. And let's see, we'll get a little bit of motion, I think. So hold in P and click for a pan node. Plug this into coordinates. And our speed here, let's say 0 0.01 and minus 0 0.01. So we'll make some sort of angular speed that's very slow. Very, very slow. Although we can dial these in later if we really wanted to. And then we'll plug into the texture here. The texture is going to be one of the ones from my texture pack on Gumroad, uh, which if you don't have, I highly recommend. I, I tend to use them in quite a lot of uh, different videos and they're very handy for, for just practicing too. Just trying to make some cool, crazy sort of uh, surface materials. Anyway, um, you can check that out. The link will be in the description. Uh, otherwise, all you need is sort of a, a mottled kind of bumpy uh, sort of normal map. I don't know if this will come through on the, on the um, recording, but it's, it's literally like what it says. It's like orange peel, that kind of, model texture, which I like using as a sort of noisy kind of, uh, you know, normal map, sort of breaks up the surface. Next, we'll uh, hold an L and click to get ourselves a lerp, which is a linear interpolate. It's going to use this alpha value to uh, sort of, as, as the uh, kind of halfway point between A and B, like the, the closer to zero, it'll be A. And if it's one, it'll be B. Zero point five is a number in, uh, perfectly in between. So that should give you an idea of how, uh, how lerps work. And I just hold in three and click to get a three vector, just like this. We want to set this uh, zero in red, zero in green, and one in blue to represent zero depth of the normal map. Then we can plug in our blue into A, our texture, our RGB into B, and use our normal depth as the alpha. For more information on uh, this little method here and sort of texture handling in general, I have a great PBR materials um, video, which I highly recommend for a sort of basic breakdown on a lot of the different sort of simple calculations you can make in a, in a material graph. And as a final step to connect our normal here, let's grab our normal from our get material attributes node, send it into an add, and we'll just add the result of this lerp before plugging it into our set normal. Let's make some space there so we can see what's going on. And there we go. That is our material function totally finished. And the only next step is just making it work. And for that, we're gonna hop over to our player. But first, let's just save everything. I'll save the function. We can also, from any window, go file and save all, or control shift S. Just make sure everything's all caught up. We'll close the function. Uh, all right, we'll head to our uh, player here, our newly formed man body, and let's grab our material function. So I'm just gonna duplicate just this function here, and over on the left, set the material function to the one that we just made, stealth camo. And then we'll just plug this in, plug the result into material attributes, and we're done. So let's press save on that. It might take a second, it's gonna to have to compile some shaders too, but now we're ready to go. So over in our player, uh, just over here in the uh, viewport, we can see we have our mannequin here, 
And let's just double check that we use the right material and we did. Very good. Oh, our primary collection is in our materials folder. I might just move that while I'm here. There we go. Let's keep everything, everything, everything sort of centralized. All right, in our character here, let's find the event graph and let's have a look. So here's our default movements and everything. There's nothing else here. This is just the, the default third person player pawn. Uh, right, let's get started with some functionality. So I'm gonna right click and hit one and get a keyboard event for the one key. So what's gonna happen? It's gonna happen every time I hit one. <laughs> Pretty simple so far, and then we'll follow it with a flip-flop, which each time this node is executed, it's gonna alternate between A and B, and it's gonna start with A. So, um, let's see, so let's get a timeline, I think. Uh, we'll call this transition. And this will just be used so that the transition from not stealth camouflage to stealth camouflage is going to be animated. There'll be some motion there, so it's not just bang happening in one frame at a time. Uh, let's plug in our A into play from start and then our B into reverse. I think that'll should serve a purpose. Or we might even do reverse from end. I don't know. We'll do some testing, I guess, once it's uh, finished. For now, uh, let's double click this timeline, open it up. We need two float tracks, one called opacity and another which we'll call normal depth to match the uh, scalar values in our parameter collection. Let's see. We'll start with opacity. So let's add a key. Uh, time zero, uh, we want it to be value one. Oh, and the length will set to one. It'll be a one second long uh, timeline. All right, so we got one key so far. Let's add another. And this will be at time one, a value of about 0 0.2 or 0 0.25. Then in our normal depth, let's make, uh, we'll make two keys. Let's get ahead of ourselves to at time zero, a uh, value of zero. And at time one, a value of 20, for example. And we can use these little keys here to zoom in our timeline so that they fit uh, fit properly. It'll affect all of them at once, which might be a little annoying, but you know, it's a good way you can get a good look at them. Anyway, let's compile that and save. Head back to our event graph. And then uh, from update here, let's set a scalar parameter because we need to be affecting the scalar values inside the parameter collection that we made. So let's set our parameter collection and we'll set the parameter name. We can just go you, uh, opacity rather. And plug it in. I'll duplicate this node with Control W. Plug this in. This will be our normal depth, and we'll hook this up to normal depth. And that's it. That's it. That's a very simple little uh, little uh, blueprint blueprint tree here. Uh, we'll hit save on that, and we'll hit play, and we'll see how it works. So if everything went correctly, when I hit the one key, zoop, we go down into <laughs> we're in we're in stealth camo mode. It uh, looks like uh, UVs might be a little bit high. I'll see if we can uh, affect that. Let's open up our function. What is UV multi set to? Not a function, our oh, MPC. UV multi. Uh, let's say 0 .0 0 0.2. And we'll hit play. Let's have another look. That's better. Get sort of a wavy, drippy effect. Sort of sells it a little bit more. Um, let's have a closer look at a few things. So. Let's find our mannequin here. We'll go animations. Uh, where's a good spot? Let's see. Third person idle. And I'll hit F to focus on him. And we can zoom in closely here. And I'm going to, where am I? Find, find our NPC. Because here we can manipulate these values uh, in the editor. Well, I better deselect him. And we can adjust these values and we can see for ourselves how the dithering is affecting, affecting the transparency of the of the character and you can have some fun with these <laughs> with these um calculations for example the normal depth is going to work you know by default because it's adding it on top of the normal from the actual object so that's well, that's why we keep it at zero until we're ready to go stealth otherwise um yeah this is this has been uh this has been a stealth camouflage tutorial guys i, I, hope, I hope you've all had fun i hope you've all learned something and i'll catch you in the next one cheers